now my students class 7 your next chapter chapter 10 of from rules the life of gautam buddha the life of gautam buddha now from a short history of the world now uh, what is written in the beginning now let us go back many centuries to um, go back many centuries to learn of a great teacher who taught the world about a simple middle path to happiness in life all of my students i am sure that you know the name of gautama buddha in your history you learned about it now the your teacher taught about gautam buddha now look at the book this was gautam buddha the picture look at the picture 143 under the tree the it, um, sitting the um, gautam buddha was sitting who taught his disciples <coughs> at benares in india in the 6th century bc in the 6th century bc he taught his disciples um, at benares in india now the 6th century bc was indeed one of the most remarkable in all history in history 6th century bc is very famous because everywhere people's minds were thinking about new things people's mind was thinking about new things everywhere they were waking up out of the traditions of kingships and asking the most penetrating questions people were um, habituated with the traditional values stylish traditional ideas but in the 6th century people for the first time they started to ask many questions their mind was was becoming their minds were becoming very eager uh, to question many new things of the world and they um, wanted to come uh, or to overcome all the barriers of their lives now siddhartha gautama my students this is very nice and interesting for you because the chapter consists of full of pictures uh, related pictures siddhartha gautama was the son of an aristocratic family which ruled a kingdom on the himalayan slopes he was married to jashadhara so siddhartha gautam belonged to not a middle class family very aristocratic family and his family that is his father ruled on a uh, ruled a kingdom on the himalayan slopes and gautam was married to yashadhara at a very very um, early age now he lived peacefully in his palace surrounded by beautiful gardens and fields so he lived peacefully in his palace surrounded by beautiful gardens and fields now Uh, one day he went out in his chariot and saw some things which shook him first he saw an old man bent with age his chariot had explained that everyone had to grow old one day then he saw a sick man so first a old man first he saw an old man this is first and then he saw a sick man he and his chariot and chariot that, that is he was on a chariot and the person he wa- who was um, moving that chariot he explained that everyone could fall sick it is the l- nature of our life now thirdly he saw a dead man thirdly he saw a dead man and learned that this was indeed what comes at the end of each life so three sights he saw first an old man which changed his life second a sick man third a dead man finally siddhartha saw an ascetic that is look at the picture my students a sage a priest who looked calm and peaceful since then the desire to become an ascetic was born in him he wanted to leave his family and st- wanted to start the life of an ascetic with time the desire became stronger this desire in his mind to become a pre- pre- uh, sage uh, that is ascetic growing stronger and stronger in his mind 
he wanted to go into the mountains and live like an ascetic at the same time one day his son was born his son was born there was great joy in the kingdom now at that time after looking at the ascetic before that he saw the three sides the uh, old man and sick man and a dead body now he started to live the life of an uh, go into the mountains at that time he, a son was born to him and there was great joy in the kingdom However, Buddha had made up his mind to leave his life of luxury behind and become an ascetic. He wanted to leave his the um, he wanted to leave the life of luxury and um, start and wanted to start a very simple life. He went softly to the threshold of his wife's chamber and saw um, there, and so he wantly um, went into the. He very calm and quietly, and he went into his wife's room and saw her by the. the light of a little oil lamp sleeping sweetly surrounded by flowers with their infant son in her arms and surrounded by flowers with their infant and with with the wife was sleeping with the infant child infant son at last he turned away and went out into the bright moonshine and mounted his ha- horse and rode off into the world now he um, left his room and he mounted on a on the horse back and rode off into the world very far um, he rode that night and dismounted beside a sandy river there he cut off his flowing locks with his sword removed all his ornaments and sent them into his horse and sold back to his house now he before that he made a man in rag clothes and enchanted clothes with him um, and ex uh, in now my students all of you will look at the book um, um, uh, before leaving his house his palace siddhartha entered into the room of his wife his wife was sleeping uh, with his surrounded by flowers with their infant son in their arms at last he turned away and went out into the bright moonshine and mounted his horse and rode off into the world very far he rode that night and dismounted beside a sandy river before that he made that he left his room his palace and after that he made a man in the rag clothes and exchange clothes with him and so having divested himself of all worldly engagement he was free to pursue his search for wisdom now entanglements now what happened um, he but gautama buddha he met a man in rag clothes that is very bad torn clothes now dirty torn clothes he exchanged gautama buddha exchanged his clothes with that man's dirty torn clothes and he freed himself with all the luxuries of life and started to live of a very simple man in search of wisdom he made his way southward to a place where hermits and teachers gathered in a hilly spot of the binda mountains he made his way towards south where to a place where hermits and teachers gathered in a hilly spot of the binda mountains there lived a number of wise men in a warren of caves and imparting their knowledge by word of mouth now he came in contact of a number of wise men in the caves they are imparting their knowledge by the words of mouth Gautama became versed in all of the great philosophies of his age but his 
acute intelligence was dissatisfied with the solution offered to him. Gautama came in contact with many wise people, but his mind of and he came to know with he came to know about the philosophies of his age, but he was not satisfied. He took five disciple companions to the jungle and there he gave himself up to fasting and penances. Penances means my students P-E-N-A-N-C-E-S that is very hard life. He took five disciples companions to the jungle and there he gave himself up to fasting and penances. His fame spread like the sound of great bell hung in the canopy of the skies, but it brought him no sense of truth achieved. His frame spread, spread everywhere, but he was not satisfied. One day he was walking up and down, trapage 147, last, trying to think in spite of his weak state. Suddenly he fell unconscious. When he recovered, he realized fasting and starving himself will not help him gain wisdom. Now, he was leading at that time his life of uh, fasting and giving very and leading a very, very hard life. One day, he was walking up and down um, to, trying to think the ultimate solution of his life, how he would uh, acquire the ultimate wisdom and but at that time he fell unconscious when he recovered he realized that fasting and starving was not the proper way to help him to gain wisdom he decided to eat normal food and look for another path to find the truth he had realized that whatever truth a man may reach is best by a nourished brain in a healthy body. Then he understood that he, he have to eat normal food and look for another part, not to give so much pain and, um, uh, and not to lead such a hard uh, life and not to lead a life of starvation. He had realized that whatever truth a man, man may reach is reached best by a, a man may reach at the height of his glory by a nourished brain. That is, he must lead a proper life and a healthy body. When the mind grapples with a great and complex problem, it makes its advances step by step but with little realization of the gains he has made until suddenly with an effect of abrupt illumination it realizes its victory so it happened to gautama gautama was trying and trying to know the ultimate end of our life now look at the book he had seated himself under a great tree by the side of a river when this sense of clear vision came to him, he was sitting like Dick in meditation by the side of a river under a great tree. It seemed to him that he saw life plain. It is said to have sat all day and all night. He sat all day and all night in profound thought and then he rose up to impart his wisdom to the world. Then he realized the truth and he rose up to impart his knowledge, to give his knowledge to the Vidu and his vision to the whole world. The starting point of his teaching was his own question as a fortunate young man. Why I am not completely happy? It was an introspective question. Introspective question. He asked the first question to himself. That is why he was not completely happy. The answer is all suffering is due to the greedy desires of the individual. 
He got the answer that all sufferings of our life is due to the greedy mm, desires of the individual. As long as human beings crave things, they will know sorrow and will not be completely happy. As long as human beings will crave for the desire for mm, the things, for money and all the comforts of life, he will not be happy. There are three principles forms that the craving for life took and they all caused sorrow. There are three principal forms for which we are uh, looking for and we are craving in our life and which caused sorrow. The first is the desire of the appetites and greed. Number one is the desire of the appetites and greed. The second is the desire for immorality. And the third is the craving for personal success, worldliness and avarice. Now my students, let me explain me what he understood that the three things we are craving for are the roots of all unhappiness and sorrows of our life. What are these? The first is the desire of the appetites and greed. Greed. We are so greedy. We want more and more and more. This is the first thing of our sorrows. The second is the desire for immorality. We are immoral. We are. We don't have any proper moral sense. We are doing many unjust things in our life. The desire for doing many unjust things. This is the second cause of sorrows. And the third is the craving for personal success. We worldliness and avarice. We always want our personal. We always think of our, um, ourselves, our own need, our own desire. Always we get the first preference. This is the root of the, our another cause of our sorrows. All these forms of desire had to be overcome to escape from the distress of life. We have to overcome all this desire in our life. When they were overcome, then serenity of soul, nirvana, the highest good was attained. If we are overcome, if we can overcome, if we are successful to overcome all this knee, all these greedy things, all these desires of our life, we will be happy and our highest good, we will attain our highest good, that is the nirvana. Gautama's disciples declared that he was a Buddha, that is an enlightened being when he realized that how we will attain nirvana Gautama's disciples declared that declared that he was a Buddha that is an enlightened being Buddha was an Buddha means an enlightened being that is he realized the ultimate truth of love how a person will achieve complete happiness in life. He preached an eightfold path that is eight things one could follow to lead the right life. We have to, if we want to lead a right life, we have to follow the eightfold path. They are the right viewpoint. What are these right? What are these? He what are these eightfold path? Number one, the right viewpoint, the right values, the right speech, the right actions, the right livelihood or way of earning. The right effort, the right mindfulness or mental ability to see and understand things and the right concentration or state of meditation and enlightenment. So my students, these are the eightfold path Gautama Buddha suggests to the whole world to achieve the to achieve nirvana that is the highest good in our life. And for that we we have to follow the eightfold path that is the right viewpoint the right values the right viewpoint our views must be right right values right morality in life we must 
always speak right thing, the right actions and the right livelihood or way of earning our earning must be in a proper way. The right effort we must have to work hard in a right way. The right mindfulness or mental ability, our mental state must be right to see and so that we can see and understand all the things properly and the right concentration or the state of meditation and always we have the right concentration or the state of meditation and enlightenment our state of meditation must be in a right way in that way we must attain achieve enlightenment that is the proper knowledge proper wisdom of life because <clears throat> now um, my students in the book for the I explain the chapter to you now the first question is name the three things Name the three things which change the mind of Gautama Buddha. Name the which change the na, uh, mind of Gautama. Which change the mind of Gautama. Gautama. At that time he was not Buddha. Gautama. Change the mind of Gautama. Now question number one point. Page number 144, he saw an old man bent with age, up till this, bent with age. Number 2, he saw a sick man. So, number 1, he saw an old man. Number 2, he saw a sick man. Thirdly, he saw a dead man. This is the three points, okay? Now, Now, my students, you, the second question is, what are the three things? Second question, all of my students, you write, page number 149, you will get the answer. What are the three things which causes which causes unhappiness in the life of human being? Again I am repeating, what are the three things? which cause which cause unhappiness in the life of human beings 149 you will get the answer again i am repeating the question what are the three things which cause c a u s e cause unhappiness in the life of a human being now answer the first is the desire of the appetites and greed Now, second is the desire for immorality. That is no proper moral sense. Third is the craving for personal success. Comma, personal success, then you write self-interest. After personal success, my student, you write 
after personal success from the book 199 149 comma self interest aclf self hyphen interest now now you write what way did gautama suggest to achieve nirvana to achieve nirvana answer but gautama preached an eightfold path Gautama preached an eightfold path. P R E A C H E D preached an eightfold E I G H T eight A F O L D eightfold path to achieve nirvana. To achieve nirvana. Again, I am um, telling you. Gautama preached an eightfold path e i g h t f o l d eightfold path to achieve nirvana full stop now my students all you all look at your book 150 page number 150 choose the most suitable option to complete the sentences now in your exam final term exam this type of question will come the 6th century bc is considered a remarkable time as then you will get four option you have to give a tick mark against the right option okay number 1 all the kingdoms were rich number 2 all kingdoms were at peace with each other Number three, great thinkers were born and were questioning the accepted norms about life. Number four, none of the above. Now, my students, you mark number three. Give a tick mark. Number three, that is, sixth century BC is very famous, remarkable because during that time, the great many great thinkers. were born at that time and they started to questioning they started to question about the existing existing um immoralities existing unjust of the society so this time the world saw experienced or witnessed the rise of many thinkers and they started to question they started to challenge the existing all immoral norms of the society now b siddhartha gautama led led a life of luxury because he was number 1 he was born in an aristocratic family number 2 he was well educated Number three, he didn't have much to do except enjoy his gardens and place. Four, all of the above. Now, number one, he was born in an aristocratic family. Okay, so number one, he was born in an aristocratic family. Now, the last one, see, he left home because. One, his father sent him into exile. Page number one fifty, my students. Two, he wanted to spend time looking for the meaning and reality of life. Now he had a bitter quarrel with his friend. None of the above. Here you give a tick mark in second. He wanted to spend time looking for the meaning and reality of life. This is the correct answer. Okay, in your exam you will get the MCQ. That is, I will give every in every question 
in the beginning you will get one sentence and just below it four options will be given you have to write against the first uh, correct option okay okay see you in my next class okay today up till this for the chapter Gautama Buddha okay thank you very much